Well, it is just a beautiful morning. It's June 4th. It's about 9 a.m. and it's around 65 degrees. I think we're going to have a beautiful day. We've had so much rain in my area recently. For about two weeks, it seemed like it rained every day. We actually broke a record for rainfall in my area. So the last time it rained this much was in 1940. So for the past three days, though, we just received a tiny bit, and I am so looking forward to just enjoying my garden, finally getting outdoors. So I just want to walk through the little herb container garden here and give you guys a little update on what's growing and give you some tips about some things I've been doing. Um, I got out here and worked in this little garden, um, I guess it was on Saturday, and I moved around a few things. What I need to do right now, this will be your first tip, and I've... Um, mentioned this before is that now that I'm transitioning from a spring to a summer herb garden I'll need to take my cool season herbs and move them over closer to my house because they will receive afternoon shade and it will just get too hot out here for them these are for things like my chives my green onions um, and I'll show you a few more uh, those will just burn up in the summer heat so I'll keep my basil over here on the left and then probably this afternoon or tomorrow I'll go ahead and start moving over my cool season herbs over here where they will receive a shade in the afternoon and um, but I want to make sure that they still are able to receive rainfall so I won't put them too close to the house I'll just move them right into the shade line and so a few things that I did over the weekend um, the first thing I did was thin out basil seedlings and I like to try to grow one basil plant per pot sometimes two um, and so I moved a lot of these around and um, you'll notice that they have at least four true leaves on them and that's a good time to move them I don't like to move them when they're much bigger and when I do move them because I don't normally like to transplant basil I'll make sure to not disturb the root system. I'll take out a big clump of soil with it, and generally they will um, transplant pretty well for me then. And then the ones that I don't use, I end up putting in a salad. So that always works out real nice. So I have some, just this, this is called a perfumo. That's like a large leaf basil. It's really pretty. This is a Siam Queen Thai basil, like a licorice flavor. This is another Perfumo, um, and a lot, all these I sow directly into my pots with seeds. I always have really good results when I just throw seeds out versus transplanting. And this is a Thai sweet basil. Um, over here is the uh, purple ruffles, really pretty. I put one of my um, Thai Siam Queen basils over here. This was one that I um, moved out. So sometimes I'll make some three or four in one container, but I don't expect for the basil plants to get really big if I do that. But that's okay because I'm growing a lot of them. So now this is the red Reuben. If you will recall on my last herb container garden tour, um, this plant was under a lot of stress because um, I can only assume it was because of the watering because now that we received so much rainfall over two weeks time period it has just sprung back now it is trying to bolt on me a little bit and I pinched off the flowers but all this leaf growth right here I can use for cooking and it's just really really pretty I don't expect I'll get much more leaf growth because you know once basil starts to bolt you can pinch it um, but it really won't continue to put out a lot more new leaf growth because you know <laughs> the, pro the reason why it's bolting is because it's signaling that it's at its end of life so it's trying to reproduce and produce seed so that's why um, but I have really enjoyed seeing how it sprung back like this so it just needed some cooling off we didn't have a lot of sunshine and it needed some I guess overcast days so I will probably actually move this one into my shade line as well now that I know it really doesn't like a lot of sun that particular variety for some reason and I didn't show you this this is the uh, kaffir line tree and it is just really 
loving all of the rain and the sun. It's looking really nice and I have a few more seeds that I popped in here that actually sprouted using the paper towel method and I see that they are starting to come up. So I may have two, maybe three more that'll come up and I can move those into other containers later. I wouldn't, you know, grow all of those in one container, but I was running out of room, so <laughs> anyway, I popped them in there. Sometimes I do that. <laughs> and of course, rosemary. These will stay in the sun. And then uh, calamondin. I've been using a little bit of the citrus. And then I popped another one of my Thai basil plants right over here on this side of the container. And then, of course, the beautiful little nasturtium flowers. So pretty in the morning sun. And then the sweet bay laurel. Love my little bay leaves. This is really a nice little plant. It has a lot more new growth on it. Looks like we've got a little visitor of some sort there. <clears throat> and this is some Greek oregano that I planted from seed. And it's done really, really well planting it that way. And I'll post a video on that very soon. If I've already posted it, I'll include a link up here in the corner for you. I did the same thing with my French thyme. And then, of course, our chives. They like the cooler temperatures. And so I will move all of these over into my shade line. Um, tarragon. I just love tarragon so much. It's such a wonderful little herb, especially when it's fresh, but it's really good dried too. And then sweet pea currant. These are the little tiny tomatoes. And thanks, thank you, Linda, for sending me some more of these seeds. And these are orange or yellow. They're going to be not red. So these will be really a lot of fun to grow this year. And so I'll try to save the seeds and do another one of those seed giveaways maybe next year. We'll have some yellow sweet pea currant tomatoes. Those are the real tiny ones. And then I put out some more seeds for basil. Um, so you'll see here there's about, I don't know, in this little cluster there's probably 12 that have germinated, maybe 10. And when those come up, I'll thin them out. And um, I just like to plant basil about once every month until um, July. So I'll do three plantings. And that's just to ensure that I have it all through the summer because you never know what will happen with some sometimes your plants will get attacked by a disease or an insect and then you won't have the herb so it's always good to just um, plant it and that way I'll have it at least until it starts to cool off for me in September and then here is apple mint looking really pretty love 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 the rain if your mint starts to slow down it's probably because it's not getting enough water. And this is probably one of the few plants that I will actually put a tub of water or a little bin underneath it later, probably in July, because it will really start to show the signs of water deficiency. You know, mint becomes very root bound and it needs a lot of water. So, so does thyme. And once they've been in a container for a while, maybe two or three years, they really need a lot of water. So, um, that will also go into my shade line. It likes a little bit of shade. Mint, mint likes that. And then another nasturtium plant over here. And then the green stock system is doing really well. Um, I'm growing a lot of nasturtiums over here. This one ended up being a trailing nasturtium. I wish I would have put that on the top tier. <laughs> They're so pretty when they just cascade over the system. Um, but that's okay. It's down there. I can always just cut it back a little bit if I need to. Um, and you notice I have a lot of them in here this year. I think, I think that would be really pretty just to grow a lot of these in here. Of course, I have some of the sweet pea currant tomatoes. I put about two or three of those in here this year. And some basil. At this point, I can go ahead and cut this off. And it will encourage it to bush out. So what I would do is just cut it right down here. You see where that new growth is coming out on either side there? I will just snip it off right above that. Take that top, put it in a salad, and then the bottom will fork out. Okay? That's just how you prune your basil. And I did a video on that a while back. I might just go ahead and include a link to that if I can. Um, and then fennel is coming up. I don't know if you can see it. It's a little dark right there. Uh, I've planted a lot of shard in here. 
So on Saturday, I pulled out a lot of lettuce. I pulled out probably two or three pockets of lettuce, and I replanted things like the chard. Um, so I planted some more heat-tolerant lettuce. I'm going to see how that does. And the reason why I did, even though I'm going into June and July, is that with the green stock system, I can kind of control the sun exposure. I can actually turn this uh, green stock system around to make sure it doesn't the lettuce doesn't get too much sun. And I think it worked out pretty well for me last year. I think that's what I did. Um, and I have some dill coming up here. And of course, uh, arugula down here. More fennel. I think I have about three fennels in here. Let's see what else I can show you over here. Some more basil down there. A lot of things grow in here. And this is a shiso. It's a really pretty. Um, this is the first year I've grown it. Perilla, I think you, it's also called. And I think it has kind of like a warm spice flavor to it. I haven't tasted it yet, so I'm looking forward to that. And then my parsley started to bolt on me, so I had to cut it off right there in the middle. The bottom leaves will still be good, but you know, this will continue to try to bolt. It'll start sending out new growth, and that new growth will be the growth that will go to seed. So right here, you can kind of see that's a skinny leggy looking stem that's coming out from um, the center and that's going to bolt to seed. I could pull that off and I still plan to use these outer leaves until I can get some more parsley growing. So over here on this side of the container garden um, I have some basil. This is one that I thinned out of one of the other containers and I put it right here in the middle of my scallions which are up and doing pretty well over here. I need to move this out from the house a little bit though because it will um, uh, not get water. So I also need to put a little uh, roller on the bottom. You notice I like to keep all of my containers elevated on these little rollers and I try to get one uh, to, to about four of them each year just depending on what my needs are. And I like to have these so I can roll around my pots they also have saucers in there to collect water if I need it, but I have to keep them empty because mosquitoes will like them in the summer. So you can't let water stand in these in the summer. Um, but I like to have the rollers because it prevents condensation from building up between, you know, the pot and the wooden deck. You don't want to have uh, your wood rot. So it provides a little bit of circulation there underneath it. And... Um, and I get these at uh, Big Lots, it comes with a little saucer, and I get some at Dollar General sometimes. And this year I picked up about four at Aldi. They had all their um, planting equipment come in, so they were $2.99 each at Aldi. And they generally run anywhere from 3 to $5. So I don't go out and buy them all at one time because <laughs> that would be quite a project there. But... Um, yeah, so I do like to keep them on little rollers, though. And so here are some cilantro. I have some also growing in my square foot garden. And this is just doing really well. I like to have a few cilantro leaves here and there. Cilantro definitely needs to be in the shade at this time of year. My temperatures right now um, are going to be around 80 to 85 during the day. That's my air temperature. And let's see, our night temperatures too is also important. So we are looking around 55 to 60 at night. Cilantro still is going to grow that way as long as I make sure I give it some shade during the day. And then another tarragon plant. This is a mint, which I propagated and I covered that in the video with the thyme and the oregano. And I'll try to make sure I leave you a link to that video if you missed it. And then over here is just a little water bucket. I like to try to keep some sun-warmed water in my container garden just in case I need to water something because I like to check on my container garden about once a day for about 10 to 15 minutes and just kind of check in. Maybe I threw out some seeds and I know that needs to be watered. Then I can just dip my little child's watering can right in here in the water and get a little water and uh, do what I need to do. I put this little... Um, cover right there on top because it will help keep mosquitoes out. So I just turned it upside down. I think I got that little 
um, cover, you know, that's th this cover is what you use for picnics to cover up your food. <laughs> Just turned it upside down, so that seems to work out pretty well. I think I got it at Dollar General for a dollar or two, something like that. They, they're carrying them in their spring collection. Okay, and then just one more thing over here. Um, I have some cilantro back there, and I'm using the shade of the um, fountain here to make sure it has shade. Um, scallions, too, are over here. I've been using a lot of those lately. My deal, it needs more space. Um, but we'll see how it, how it does. I'm, I've just been using it as I need it. I have, a lot, I have a lot more of this in my square foot garden. And then, of course, more scallions. I'm always throwing out seeds of scallions. Uh, Sherville has bolted on me. So I cut off the flowers. And I actually put them over here in a little mason jar. They look kind of like a delicate baby's breath or something. So I think they look really pretty. Anyway, I just wanted to go ahead and clip them off. And so that's where those are. And, you, and Sherville is a very light very subtle anise flavor. It's a uh, French parsley and it likes about the same growing conditions as cilantro. So it doesn't like the heat at all. And then um, some Greek oregano, which I also propagated. And then these are, these are just a couple of citrus trees. I'm tr still trying to find a home for them. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see how that goes. Okay, well there you go. I hope you enjoyed my walk through my little container garden here. And if you have any questions, please leave them down below the video and I'll try to help you the best I can. And there's my little shady garden down there. I know I told y'all about that garden. It's just covered with shade most of the day. So I'm just so happy this year that I moved my square foot garden. And anyway, so it's a new garden for me. I'll try to give you a tour of that here very soon. Thanks so much for watching. Y'all have a beautiful day.